news, everyone. Yeah, so I'm back. I know most of you are probably like, I didn't even know she left. Anyways, uh, I didn't actually really leave. I just sort of went through a really personal loss and now I'm past the everything sucks stage and I'm ready to make videos again. Everything's coming up Millhouse. Plus, whenever people tell me not to post or to be quiet or that they're gonna unfriend me, my natural reaction is always... So, let's talk about some stuff that's been going on. We begin with the Mars Perseverance launch, which happened at the end of July, and I've pieced together the highlights of the launch here. Status check. Go Atlas. Go Centaur. Go Mars 2020. Eight, seven, six, five, five, four. Engine ignition, two, one, zero. Release and liftoff. As the countdown to Mars continues, the perseverance of humanity launching the next generation of robotic explorers to the red planet. And we have a uh, good indication of SRB jettison of all four SRBs. And the vehicle has gone to closed loop guidance. Vehicle body rates are responding normally at this time. The vessel carrying Perseverance is estimated to dip into Mars's orbit in February next year, a good five months away. NASA have set up a digital tracker on their website so that enthusiasts can follow Perseverance progress through space towards the red planet. Here we have the vessel, and here is its current location in the solar system. You can zoom out or in as you please, and the information on the side here is regularly updated, presumably in real time. If you scroll down through the webpage, you'll find more detailed information about the vessel and its journey ahead. In relation to the red planet itself, evidence for multiple bodies of water existing kilometres beneath the Martian ice has been published in Nature Astronomy. Unfortunately though, in order to access all the information in the study, you have to pay for it. But there are multiple news sites with enough information for one to piece together. The discovery of water was made two years ago using radar data from the ESA's Mars Express. An instrument known as MARSIS was used to probe the planet's southern polar region using radio waves that bounce off different surfaces and reflect the data back to the instrument. Scientists can determine the nature of the material through the way the signals are reflected back to MARSIS. More recently, however, areas of high reflectivity in the polar region suggest the presence of multiple liquid lakes beneath the ice, according to this study. But not everyone is convinced that this interpretation of the data is accurate, and some believe it to be downright incorrect. Of course, more information is needed, and with several countries on track to head to Mars, the race is on to see who can find the answers first. Now, also in the news recently was the hell planet Venus, or more specifically, the contents of the planet's clouds. Everyone was really excited for like two days, wondering if there could be life squirming around above Venus. The discovery of a gas known as phosphine in Venus's clouds was published on September 14th by Nature Astronomy, and the article was strongly suggestive of organic life being a possible cause for the presence of the phosphine. The article details the experiment and the results extensively. However, the writers walk back many of the implications of alien life and subsequently most of the excitement with the following statement. Even if confirmed, we emphasize that the detection of pH3 is not robust evidence for life, only for anonymous, unexplained chemistry. There are substantial conceptual problems for the idea of life in Venus's clouds, the environment is extremely dehydrating as well as hyperacidic. However, we have ruled out many chemical routes to pH 3 with the most likely ones falling short by 4 to 8 orders of magnitude. To further discriminate between unknown photochemical and or geological processes as a source of Venusian pH 3, or to determine whether there is life in the clouds of Venus, substantial modelling and experimentation will be important. 
Ultimately, a solution could come from revisiting Venus for in C2 measurements or aerosol return. So, while there are no real answers yet, there could be if public interest in Venus rises. The writers of the article suggest a return to the planet to gather more information, and with enough funding, NASA could be sending probes to Venus in the near future. But for now, these secrets remain locked within that strange alien world. Speaking of alien worlds, did any of you catch the trailer for Dune? Apparently, it's generating a lot of controversy, including with this guy who directed what people are calling a psychedelic interpretation of the Dune book. Apparently, he said the trailer was predictable, and I kind of agree. There were things I liked and things I didn't like. For example, I really liked the costumes, casting was good and I loved how they redesigned the sandworm to look more like a tapeworm as opposed to a demogorgon but to be perfectly honest the trailer still kind of fell flat for me the colors the music and the overall vibe was really muted and underwhelming despite this though I still think it does look interesting and it's worth seeing especially for fans of the books I think the trailer was just not put together well. It somehow misses the mark in a few ways. But I look forward to seeing the film in full anyway. Oh, by the way, I fixed the trailer, everyone. I've put it at the end of this video, so make sure you check that out and watch to the end. Just, just trust me. And finally, everything worked out just fine. Nah, I'm just kidding. Because also causing pop culture controversy is regular JK Rowling, who is back in the spotlight after releasing her latest book, Troubled Blood. The usual suspects took offense to the book's existence, claiming the plotline about a man who dresses as a woman in order to murder them is transphobic. One Australian bookstore even made international headlines after declaring that they would no longer stock or sell Harry Potter books because of J.K. Rowling's opinions on gender. This whole controversy has gotten insane. And if I were J.K. Rowling, I'd be asking these crazy people, Why are you so obsessed with me? I mean, did we all forget that this exists? It rubs the lotion on its skin or else it gets the hose again. <laughs> yes, you will, precious. You will get the hose. Seriously. This is my personal response to anyone who is genuinely mad at J.K. Rowling. Oh. Would you f me? I'd f me. I'd f me hard. That's right, you whiny little babies. Well, that concludes this week's video. Thanks for watching and make sure you stay tuned for that improved Dune trailer coming now. dream things that happen just as you dream them yes the test is simple remove your hand from the box and you die what's in the box pain
element of surprise. Surprise! An animal caught in a trap will gnaw off its own leg to escape. What will you do? I don't want to live on this planet anymore.